Welcome to Worship Online today at Emmanuel United Methodist Church. My name is Ben Morris. I serve here as the pastor, and I'm so grateful that you have found us for worship. Whether Emmanuel Church has been your home for a long time or you're with us for the first time, looking for a good word of hope from the God that loves you so much. We'd love to know who's with us in worship today. In the comments of our video on YouTube is a link to our website called A Welcome Card. It's just a way for folks to check in so that we can be in relationship together. Also, friends, in the comments of our video is another link to our website called a prayer card. If we can be in prayer for you this week, please let us know. Friends, during our season of Lent, we were in a worship series called Meeting Jesus at the Table. And we're extending that just another week into this season of Easter as we see the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread in our story from Luke's Gospel, the walk to Emmaus. There were two disciples of Jesus walking along, still processing the, the crucifixion of Jesus, and they'd heard this strange story that the women had gone to the tomb to anoint the body of, of, of Jesus, and the stone had been rolled away, and they had not yet really understood what this meant. And this stranger started to walk along with them and listened to all they had to say about these last few days and the stranger friends was in fact Jesus and it wasn't until the breaking of the bread similar to how he did it in the upper room that they recognized who he was we meet Jesus at the table once again I'm so glad you're with us as we listen for how Jesus is re re revealed in the sharing of bread together and all that God has for us in those moments. Can we pray together? God, we're so grateful for the gift of this day, your love for us, all that you have for us in this story of Scripture, for all that make our worship possible of our music team, our editing team, and grateful God that we listen for you no other voices that might distract us but at the table we have come to hear a word of grace from you today open our hearts for your message on this day together in Christ's name we pray amen Friends, thank you for all of the ways that you share time and talent and financial gifts through the ministries of Emmanuel Church.
It was kind of a quiet week as that snowstorm came in late Thursday afternoon and shut down a lot of our Wednesday night activities. But before that, we had a bake sale on the election day, all of the proceeds for which go to our ministry partners in Senegal to support the Women's Sewing Center, the Nutrition Center, uh, Feeding Children. We made a little over $200. It was a smaller one of our bake sales. Again, the uh, weather affected the turnout, but every little bit helps. And as you might imagine, friends, $200 will go a long ways in the country of Senegal. So thank you to those of you who might have helped to, to bake during that bake sale or were there present to um, man the stand and, and be a, a friendly face. We had so many people, friends, that were just so many important pieces and shared their gifts. And we look forward to the next one of those in August. So be thinking about how you might be able to bake and help for that next one. When we have two more elections this year, we know we'll be even bigger. How much can we raise for Senegal during those moments? And thank you, friends, for your gifts for our ministries here at Emmanuel Church. Whether you send gifts in through the mail or you're with us in worship from time to time and can share a gift in the offering plate, I use our online giving, which is available through our website, emmanuel-umc.org, or there is an app. You can download the Venco mobile app for your tablets or your smartphones. God, we are so grateful for how you have blessed us immensely and the opportunity to return a portion of those gifts back to you through the ministries of Emmanuel Church the ministries of which you've called us to right out here on this corner, this neighborhood, and the, the many relationships we have made in, in so many parts of the world, God. We're grateful for our neighbors in Senegal and the many gifts this week shared at, at the bake sale that through the, the making of a few cookies or a piece of bread, God, we are able to share what we have and make a difference in a place so far away. We ask your continued blessings on these gifts for the continuing sharing of your kingdom. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our reading of gospel today is from Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and dis discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along the road? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of our women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart, to believe that all the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if they, he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. But when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, 
and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. God, we thank you for your word, the story of your grace. Many years ago, a friend of mine wanted to take me to one of his favorite restaurants. It was a Chinese buffet place. He said it was some of the best he'd ever had, and the owners were very friendly people. I said, sure, and we picked a day to meet up. We were greeted at the door by a friendly face that asked me what I wanted to drink with my lunch, and then directed me to the buffet line. And then she glanced at my friend with a very knowing look and said, Iced tea for you? She recognized my friend right away, his frequent visits, and remembered his drink order. My friend looked a little uncomfortable. Um, uh, yeah, iced tea, thanks. My friend nodded and smiled as we headed towards the buffet line. Then he said to me under his breath, I have to stop coming here. Food is one of those things, friends, that helps us to remember one another. We have those people that have a favorite food or drink that we remember them by, or that special dish at a family gathering that we can't go without and we can still see the face of the person that handed down the recipe. When we come to the table, it is not just to feed our physical bodies. We are engaged in our hearts, in our minds, and in our memories. That's an important message that God has for us today as we are extending our worship series from Lent one more week into the season of Easter, meeting Jesus at the table. In our gospel story for today, we join two disciples of Jesus who can't find Jesus at all. In Luke's gospel, this is the first story immediately after the resurrection. The disciples are scattered, confused, still wandering in the face of death that they have seen at the cross. And some have heard the tomb of, is empty, but they don't know what it means. They have not yet seen the risen Christ. They are walking and talking, and they do not recognize this stranger. They do not yet know that the person with them is Jesus. They are talking about Jesus, talking about the deeds of Jesus, his mighty works and his death, but they don't know it's him. Scripture says their eyes were kept from recognizing him. As they neared the village, the stranger was going to go his separate ways from the disciples. But they invited him, stay with us, it's getting dark soon. They invited the stranger to stay with them, shared what little they had, some bread. And as the bread is shared around the table, they discovered who their traveling companion was. Food is one of those things that helps us remember. And in this moment, friends, it is not just the bread itself that revealed to these disciples who Jesus was. It was how the bread was shared that opened their eyes. There are some particular things that Jesus said and did that stirred the hearts and memories of the disciples. All four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, tell us the story of the Last Supper that Jesus has with his followers 
that moment that we share together when we gather around the table for Holy Communion. But Luke's Gospel, where our story is from today, how Luke tells the Last Supper has some very specific movements which we kind of hear again in the Emmaus story. Four particular actions that Jesus does in the upper room and again today. He took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them. These four actions helped them to remember that night in the upper room it stirred their hearts, opened their eyes. Four actions that reveal the identity of Jesus because of who he was and who he is. The grace that he showed them in and before is revealed again around the table in the breaking and sharing of the bread. He took bread gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them. Jesus takes bread, which offers us the important reflection of him being present with these disciples in the first place, of welcoming the stranger to the table. Jesus, the one who was not recognized by the disciples, was welcome at their table. And then he took bread, bread they offered to him after being invited to join them at the table as they walked along. And then, friends, he blessed the bread, or he gave thanks. Christ, again, an example to us of being grateful to God grateful for every good gift. How we need to remember to tell the story of God's love for us again and again, especially at the table. Come grateful for the gifts that made this food and the hands that prepared it. He broke the bread. In the action of breaking the bread, we witness the abundance of God. That by sharing in what we have in the name of Jesus, there will be enough. The abundance of God's grace. Another one of the places that we witness this fourfold action in Luke's gospel of take, bless, break, and give is in the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took what was offered, the five loaves, and all ate until they had their fill. When we love God and neighbor, there is always enough trusting in God's abundance. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. Even though Jesus was their guest, he was the one distributing, giving the bread. The eyes of these disciples are opened because, again, Christ is the host at the table. When the disciples recognized the risen Christ, they remembered what they already knew, that death does not have the final word. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. Four simple actions that reminded them of the ways that Jesus invited them to love and serve the ways he invited them to life. And at the table, he continues to invite them to live again. And in the same way, friends, we are witnesses of the resurrection every time we gather at the table in Jesus' name. Jesus invites us to share in life again once more. 
in gratitude, in God's abundance. Because he is the host at the table, all are welcome. I've truly enjoyed our meet, meeting Jesus at the table Bible study that we have been in since the beginning of Lent. Hard to believe it's over. And from this chapter on Emmaus, I appreciate the comments of the author, Christine Foy, as she writes, We are still witnesses to that movement in which bread is broken and hospitality is extended to all, in which light overcomes darkness and hope sustains us through struggle. Bread is broken. Hospitality is extended to all. Food is one of those things that helps us remember. Jesus is always with us at the table. He continues to call us to the feast. May we see the resurrected Christ in those table moments around us every day, welcoming the stranger, giving thanks, breaking bread, and sharing it. God, we do give you great thanks and praise. We worship the risen Jesus Christ, the one who has conquered death. Thank you for the reminder of this story, God, that even though our eyes might be clouded, we know that the risen Lord is among us. Help us to use these reminders as signs, God, for how we might need to Jesus to be revealed to us. In the taking, in the giving thanks, in the breaking, and the giving, of welcoming the stranger, of gratitude, in trusting your abundance, and remembering that you are our host. We give you great thanks and praise for your abundant grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us online for worship this week at Emmanuel Church. So grateful that you could be with us. Well, friends, a lot of our normal activities were canceled last week. Spring has not exactly sprung, but hopefully these next few days will feel a little bit more normal. Our Wednesday night meal will be back along with Bible study after that and choir on Wednesdays. Our friends at St. James will have their Bible study on Wednesday afternoons at 2 p.m. We'll have a little more sunshine and things will be a little back 
to normal as much as they can be with spring weather in Wisconsin. Hope that you will be a part of it with us. As we go forth, may the love of God, the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.